Okay, the clavicle can be a very tricky thing to set up the way that we're setting it up anyhow. It's uh, not too bad, but for the most part, some of the parts can kind of trip you up. So you want to pay attention very carefully. Do this a few times before calling it good or acting as though you you know it. Okay, now the thing to do is we're going to create our own manipulator this time to begin with the clavicles. We're going to start with the first section, which is just creating a manipulator. So to customize our manipulator, you can do it just as a curve. So we've been using under create NURBS primitives, we've been using circles. Okay, we've also been using locators. These are the different things that are not going to render out when we render. So if we come up here to some of the curves, we know that a curve is basically the same thing as under the NURBS primitives. If I were to go to circle, the NURBS circle that we've been using for our controllers here, like this guy right above the hand and the one around the wrist and the foot and all that good stuff is in fact a type of curve. So we can use CV curve tools, we can use EP curve tools, and in this case we are going to use the EP curve tool. So to begin with, I'm going to come over here to the option box on the right and click that. Now if you want it to be smooth, you can, you can draw it out using the settings based off of cubic. And you're going to see that number 3 is cubic. We also have 5 and 7. And we also have Bezier. So if you guys know how to use Bezier curves, just like that of um, Photoshop and Illustrator, then you can do that and you're going to have to convert those. Well, this is the EP curve, so it should convert it for you. We do have an EP, I'm sorry, a Bezier curve tool that works like the pen tool in, in Maya, I mean not Maya, well in Maya now, but also in, in Photoshop and Illustrator. But for now, we can do a linear for this exercise. Linear just means straight lines, so it'll end up looking like a polygon if you were to revolve it, or if you want them to go straight like an arrow, just the way that we're going to be creating, then we can work with it that way. So I will pop out, and actually, after I put it into linear, let me just go to the channel box and open this up a little more so you guys can see a lot better. But I'll pop out of the perspective view, and I'm going to pop into the front view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know, kind of go over, and this part right here is the clavicle. So I can just kind of go over the clavicle. That way it's already placed a little bit closer to where I'm going to want it to be. Okay. Now, I like to hold down X when I'm doing this. X is basically the hotkey for snap to grid right up here. And it makes it a little more easy to work with. So you can either hold down X or click on this snap to grid, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna hold down X, and you're gonna see that this is evoked. Okay, it looks like it's pushed in, so it's on. I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna click, and one point should be right here on the grid. I'm gonna go down to, and over to, and basically I'm just creating an arrow. If I go over to the right one, click, go down two units, click, over two units, click, up two units, click to the right one unit and click and the very last one go up two units and over to the left two units and click once I'm done using the curve or create curve tool I can hit enter and basically because we had it set to linear we have straight lines and we've created an arrow alright so once we draw this out we want to rename this thing and over here under curve one instead of curve one we're gonna call this left clavicle manipulator. You could also call it controller if you like. I think it might be called manip in the notes or manipulator, but you are more than welcome to call it controller. Left clavicle controller. Now, this is just creating this clavicle controller. We need to show our geometry again. So I'm going to kind of back away from this a little bit. I might even hide my grid. I don't really need it now at the moment. So I'm just going to go to the easy way of doing it. Up to the very top. Click on display. Down to grid. And this seems to be a glitch in Maya where the grid keeps coming back every time you open up the scene, whether you have it hidden or not. Because it's showing as hidden. See this? There's no check mark. So it's showing as hidden. I just will simply turn it on. Go back up to display, go back down to grid and turn it off, and that seems to alleviate the situation or the problem at hand. Now, 
we just need to place this for the moment. So I'm going to go to my channel box here, click on Geo, the Geo layer to make it visible. So we have a little V there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it above the geometry high enough to where I would feel comfortable with it. So I'll come over here to my move tool. And you can see I drew this out. So look, it actually moved it down to my origin here. So zero, zero is where my pivot point is. So one of the things I can do is just go up to modify at the very top and go down to center pivot. Once I center my pivot point, everything's going to be based off of there. So my translations, rotations, and all that good stuff, scale. And I do need to go to scale. So I'll hit R on my keyboard or just come over here and click on the scale tool. And I'm still in the front view. So if I scale it from the center here, and actually this is a flat object, so it really doesn't matter where I scale it from. That looks like a nice size for this character, not too overwhelming not going to be obnoxiously in the way. So it's over the shoulder right there uh, in between the shoulder and the clavicle. It's really up to you where you would like this to be. I think a good spot might actually even be the hump of the shoulder right here or just right above the clavicle. So anywhere in between here is really going to be up to you. I find that when it's too close to the head, it can be an issue. So I generally like to kind of bring it either right here in between the two joints or over here over the shoulder. Or if I base it off of the geometry, I can put it like right over the hump of the, the shoulder right here. And that might work pretty well for me. So I'm going to put it there just for now. And I can move it up a little bit. That might be okay there. Now I need to pop into the perspective view or the side view because you're going to see that it's right above the area where we're going to be working. And we do really want it to be more behind the body, like so. And it can be in between you know, your pole vectors and the body itself, and that's okay. It could be a little further back, closer to the pole vectors. Um, somewhere in the middle, I, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that for the moment, okay? And that's our left clav clavicle controller. Pardon my uh, blabble, blabber. But I'm gonna come up here and freeze the transformations and delete the history so that I don't have any remaining stuff here in the channel box that could possibly mess up my rigging. So first off, I will go up to Modify, down to Freeze Transformations. Then I will go up to the top here and go to Edit, down to Delete by Type, and over to Delete the History. Okay. I can duplicate this, and I can base it off of where this object is. Uh, here's a cool little way of doing it. If we group it, the object itself, by going up to Edit, down to Group, and I didn't check my settings, but I know that generally group, what it does, it'll group the object and it will send the pivot point down to the center. Okay, so I'm going to click on group and the group center point or center pivot point. I mean, sorry, I shouldn't say center pivot. The group's pivot point is down at the bottom. It seems as though it's center, but really all it did is go to the origin just by, by nature of the way this works. Okay, the way that they created the tool. And what I want to do is I can duplicate this object or this group, and then we're going to get rid of the groups, so we don't have to worry about that. But since I knew it was going to go to the origin, instead of trying to place it perfectly on this side, I will just duplicate that group, and I can hit Control D or Edit down to Duplicate. Now I have a group two, and I will do what's called an inverse, and I will inverse the scale of that geometry. That way it goes from the left to the right. And we know that going right to left, based off of our front view here, is going to be moving in the x-axis. You could always check this thing down here on the bottom left. X goes right and left. And in this case, our, our tool is actually indicating that for us as well. So the red handle is the x handle, indicating right and left. So if I put this to a negative 1 and hit enter, it should jump to the other side. And it's going to be pretty much the same distance away from the right shoulder as the left shoulder is okay the next thing is to get rid of those groups but I don't want to leave that negative one in there so I could just go up to modify down to freeze transformations and I could again delete the history just in case I mean this is just precautionary it should work just fine with the next step that we're gonna do but I'm gonna delete the history anyway and again I do like to make my buttons so you guys will see up here that my shelf is right there alright and a lot of times I'll make a Jared shelf for rigging 
and for animating and all that good stuff. So I'm going to come over here and deal with these groups real quick. And I accidentally moved that. So, or I just got some weirdness. So I'm just going to type in zero again. I think I'm holding down my middle mouse button and, and doing that. So, okay. What I can do here now is I can select the object. And it's either the object or the group. But let me select the object first. And there's the left clavicle controller. If I tap the up arrow, then I can see that it's part of group one. So I'll tap the down arrow to get back to the sub-level or the child of the group, which is the left clavicle controller. I'll start off with that one. Go up to edit at the very top and down to ungroup. Now it's telling me it can't ungroup a leaf level transform. So that means I can actually tap the up arrow and get to the group itself because the group is not a leaf level. Think of it as a branch. The group node would be the branch and the leaf is the child of the branch because it spawned it and all that good stuff. So I will go up to edit, down to ungroup, and that actually worked. So the group node should be gone. Okay, and don't forget, you can always do it in the outliner. So if I go up to window, down to outliner, there it is right there. I can go to the bottom because I know that a lot of these things are created, and the new stuff that is created is put towards the bottom. And in this case, I can click on group 2, and that happens to be the right clavicle controller or manipulator. I'll click the little plus arrow here, or sign, to drop down the leaf node, and that would be the left clavicle controller, and we need to rename it. So first off, I'm going to double click it to rename it, and I just need to change left to right. Hit enter. Okay. Now, if I want to pull it out of the group here, all I have to do is hold down my middle mouse button. So ho hover over it, hold down your middle mouse button, and drag upward, and when you have one dotted line like this, now let me actually go up here. One dotted line like that indicates that you're going to drop this thing in between two objects. If you get a dotted line that's encompassing, um, I don't want to say circling, but it's it's kind of highlighting an object that left arm uh, PV, then that would actually drop it inside of there and parent it to the left arm PV. So I'm just going to go down to right here below where I have one single dotted line to drop this from the group into its own little section there, leaving the group node by itself, allowing me to select it and simply hit the delete key to get rid of it. Okay. Now this is one of the parts where you save this now that you have the clavicle manipulators. If you want them to be larger, that's totally fine. It's really up to you. Um, always double check these. I don't know why I keep getting this node here. So I will just actually type in zero and hope for the best there. Because I did get some of those transformations to come over and I don't really know why. So I just have some weirdness going on there, but that should be sufficient right there. Hopefully you guys don't get the same thing going on. But I can always do this again. It really took like uh, just a couple of minutes there. Okay. So for the next part, we're going to start dealing with setting up the clavicle manipulator for the left arm. Because I don't really have the right arm going. I could set this up for the right arm. Nothing's going to hurt it, hurt this or break it if I were to set this up before setting up the IK handle and the pull vector and all that stuff. Okay, so for the next tutorial, that's what we're going to be getting into.